Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Fort Side Fieldhouse, where tonight on WOSN, we'll bring you a Midwest Athletic Conference matchup between the visiting Marion Local Flyers and the homestanding Fort Recovery Indians. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Dave Bowen, and we'll bring you all the action tonight here from inside the Fort Side Fieldhouse. And Dave, a couple of squads looking for a win, both uh, coming off losses. Yeah, a great conference matchup tonight. Garrett, it's great to be your wingman tonight. And hello, high school basketball fans. Let's look at our keys to the game right away here. Mr. Attention Getter, Kale Rammel for Fort Recovery. He averages 23.8 points per game, number one in the MAC, and 10.5 rebounds a game, number two in the MAC. He's the double-double player for Fort Recovery. What's Marion Local going to do to stop him? It's going to be interesting to see the defensive scheme that Coach Godemiller puts together. Secondly, find the range. Marion Local came up two points short in their last contest, as you alluded to, 35 to 33 to Springfield Shawnee. They were one for 15 from deep. Coach Godemiller wants to see that improve. Coach Leverett from Fort Recovery, he'd like to keep them right there, put yes, a lot of pressure on the ball, make them shoot it deep from distance and contest every shot. And then number three, Garrett, big boy basketball. We're in the MAC, the Midwest Athletic Conference. They grow them big down yes, here. Yes, sir. And both coaches know that rebounding is huge. Whichever team can win the boards, the coaches feel that team will have a great opportunity to win this game. You mentioned those big guys, 6'9", 6'8", 6'7", 6'5", across the floor. We're going to see some big guys try to play some basketball tonight here, and it's, it's turned it in for an exciting one, and we're looking forward to bringing it to you next. It's Marion Local and Fort Recovery coming up here on WOSN. About to get underway here at the Fort Side Fieldhouse in this Midwest Athletic Conference matchup between the Marion Local Flyers and the Fort Recovery Indians. Once again, I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Dave Bowen. Tonight's officials, you take a look at them. We always appreciate the officials giving up their Friday night to make sure we get some high school basketball underway here in the area. And it's also time to get a better, better acquainted with some of the squads tonight. This will take a look at the Marion Local Flyers. First, their starting lineup, Jack Kanapke, the six foot nine junior, is somebody we'll keep an eye on tonight. He'll be in the tip off circle, ready to tip off here. As you see, Austin Meekamp, Tate Hess, Luke Pullman, and Brandon Eink rounding out the starting five for the Flyers. And then for Fort Recovery, the home team tonight, Kale Rammel. The Indians average 50 points a contest. Rammel averages just a shy of 24, so he'll try to put some points on the board tonight. Daniel Patch, a six foot seven senior center. Will play down low with Landon Post, Troy Holman, and Rex Leverett joining Rammel and Patch in the starting five. As you see, Marion Local, number eight in the Associated Press, number 16 in a Martin RPI, nine and two. Lost their last time out, 35-33 to Springfield Shawnee, averaging 50 points a contest and giving up 41. And then when you take a look at the Indians, Bob Leverett in his first season, eight and five, started the season eight and one, but have lost four in a row and would like to snap that skid here tonight, Dave. You're exactly right. The Indians, they bring in 50.4 points per game, a high of 65, and they allow 47 points. Average margin of victory, 3.46. Yep. For recovery, a little home cooking here this evening. Hoping to get a win, an all-important conference win. Yeah. Improve the three and two, keeps them in the hunt for a conference championship. Marion Local wants to get the W to stay on pace with the Coldwater Cavaliers. Seven and five overall, but four and oh in conference action. We're getting set to tip here from the Fort Sight Fieldhouse. For recovery, giving themselves final instructions as the Flyers a patiently, patiently await the white and purple to come to the floor. A pretty packed house here inside the Fort Sight Fieldhouse tonight for this MAC matchup. Yeah, great crowd. Marion Local with 11 MAC championships, second overall for recovery, has four under their belt. Who's number one? Delta St. John's. Hmm, good guess. No, we're going to go with the Redskins, St. Henry. Oh, that's, that's, that's a better guess. Yep, they have 13. So Kanapke and Kale Rammel in the center circle. Scorebooks ready, scoreboards ready, referees are ready. And a tip off is won by the Indians. And they'll have first crack at it as Troy Holman stands between the circles directing traffic. And Marion Local's going to open up in man-to-man -man defense. Patch at the top of the key, works to the right wing. A little scoop shot up and under from Holman off the mark. Rebound pulled down, poked loose, and now scooped up by Tate Hess. 
Cubs. Good offensive possession. They come up empty there, but good ball movement for Fort Recovery. And Fort Recovery returns the favor in man-to-man -man defense as well against the Flyers. They'll lob it down low to Kanapke. Double teamed on the block. He'll muscle up a shot and drops it home. Yeah, what I've been so impressed with Kanapke over his career as a junior now, still has another year, but his footwork has improved tremendously. We see it right there. Nice spin move. Spin to the 10 right over the front of the rim for two. Indians work the ball around the perimeter. Landon Post will fire up a three off the back iron. Rebound. Grabbed by Kanapke. He'll get it to a guard. The Flyers come back the other way. Lee Camp with his back to the basket. Gets back out to Hess. It's a screen from Kanapke, and he'll roll to the bucket. Gives to Knee Camp a long three from the big sophomore off the front iron, and for recovery, he'll watch it fly out of bounds. Knee Camp, he will shoot that ball from deep. Shoots 28% out there. Uh, like you said, at the beginning of that possession, had his back to the basket, but he's more of a face towards the rim than behind it. And we saw him fire that three away right there with the miss. Indians still looking for their first bucket. As Ramble gives back to Post. He'll drive baseline. Triple team to the corner. Patch for three. Barry's one. Nails it. Daniel Patch. A lot of confidence. He leads that Fort Recovery squad in three-point shooting at 26%. Gets him on the board. Indians don't shoot it particularly well from three. Just 23%. But got the first one to go there. Give them the lead. Flyers will come back with one of their own. Hits the front of the iron. Patch grabbed the board, and he's fouled on the rebound attempt. Yeah, we saw two keys right there. First of all, Marion Local misses their second three. If you go back to the last game, that makes them one for 17 <laughs> overall. And then on the boards where the big boys play, nice checkout by Fort Recovery. They draw the foul. And one for 17, David, is that does that get in your head of either, you know, maybe we're just not good at shooting the three or, you know, it's just one of those off nights? What, what Is there an explanation for shooting that poorly? That is a great question. And obviously, you know what happened. It's just, do the coaches bring it up in practice? And maybe you just do more shooting drills and you don't really talk about it that much. But, yeah, that great question, Gary. Just depends on how it's been addressed by the, by the coaching staff. Hess tries to fire a bullet pass down low to Kanapke. It's poked out of bounds by the Indians. We'll stay with Marion Local. We approach five and a half to play on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Coleman, the inbound pass, holds it at the right wing. Gives to Brandon Ike. Into the corner to Hess. He'll back back out. Knee Camp will put up another three. Didn't get that one to go either. And the rebound pulled down by Rex Leverett. Good form, good flow, just doesn't go. Now Rammel gives to Holman. He'll back back out. Tries to bullet a pass to post, does, into the corner. Leverett lets one fly, hit the side of the backboard, but the offensive rebound comes down to the Indians. Jumper from post off the mark, and Hess will corral the loose basketball. Long outlet pass, dangerous outlet pass, poked out of bounds by the Indians. Yeah, good defensive rotation right there uh, by number 22, Kale Rammel. He was back and able to get a hand on that, deflected out of bounds. Flyers inbound. Look for a flare screen here. Get it to Pullman in the near corner, trying to get it to Kanapke. Does. One-on-one -on -one with Rammel in the lane. Left-hand hook shot. No. Patch the board. Again, great footwork. Comes up short. But that's where the ball needs to go right now if you're Marion Local. Got to get it inside to Kanapke. Get some flow offensively. And that might take a little pressure off of that outside shot. Holman between the circles. Working to his left. Back door to Rammel. Just a bit too high. Great, great idea. Rammel had back cut, and he was open. They just didn't connect. As you said, Garrett, the pass just a little high. Would have been an easy two if they would have connected there. So on the first uh, possession from Marion Local, they were deliberate. They wanted to get the ball to Jack and Apke, and that time, the last time down, was the, the second time they've been that deliberate. Do, you, do we expect to continue to see them just trying to get it down low to 33? I believe so. I think that's where your bread and butter is. Got to go to the big man. He's your leading scorer. He's a stat stuffer. Just got to be patient, as you said. Work the ball, find him in there, or penetrate like that. Get to the rim. Hess, one of the and one. It's on the floor. Foul created by Landon Post, his first. Yeah, Dan Holland with the call. Contact before the shot. Hess. We see it on the lobs replay into, right here. Yep, and we get the bucket. I'm sorry, no, Garrett. No, no, Hess lobbed into knee camp for an easy bucket in the lane. And that makes it 4-3. Advantage Flyers. So for recovery, talked about tempo. Coach Leverett, tempo, want it. they don't want to get into an up-and-down game. They want to be patient here, and we're seeing that thus far in the first quarter. 
And again, they're happy to play a tight game. Good penetration there on the pass. The give and go. It's a good pass to Leverett, and he pokes it away from behind, but he's called for the foul. It was a nice pass. Leverett thought he got fouled, didn't get the call, but then played heads up defense there. Picks up his first foul, however, trying to poke that ball away from behind. So 4 3, the score remains. Halfway gone here in this first quarter. As Hess will slowly walk the ball across the timeline. Now turn it on, lob down low to Kanapke. Off the window and an easy bucket for the junior. Yeah, Kanapke was able to push the defender up the, the lane a little bit there, making the lob pass advantageous to him. No backside help. And as a result, Fort Recover is going to call timeout and talk about that. So Bob Leverett wants to talk about it. We'll step aside as well. 6-3 Flyers lead here on WOSN. 6-3 the score, Marion Lopo the lead, for recovery of the basketball. It's Troy Holman, holds it, gives to Patch. He'll put up a contested three, didn't get that one, hit one earlier, but the offensive rebound comes down to Leverett, and he's fouled. Nice offensive board work there by Fort Recovery, specifically number 12, Rex Leverett. We see it on the Wabash replay right here. Gets the board, gets fouled, go to the free throw line. Leverett, he is a 61.9, let's call it 62% free throw shooter. Nails that first one, Garrett. Foul committed by Brandon Eink, his first, as you see the six foot four junior. Can't hit the second one, Neat Camp grabs the board. The Flyers bring it across the timeline, Hess into the near corner. They'll bounce to Neat Camp. Cross court pass. The Mitchell ran in the game for the first time. Gives to Eink. Thought about the three. Instead, we'll drive right down Main Street and lay one up and in. Eink averages three points. Gets two right there. Yeah. Looked like he knew what he was doing. Penetrated into the paint. Used that left hand. Kissed it off the window. Nice shot. Jump stop by Leverett in a high post. Off the heel. Offensive rebound by Rammel. Creates a little space and drops it in. Yeah, you can see why he averages double digits and boards right there. Good nose for the offensive rebound. And he goes right back up and finishes. Nice job, Kale Rammel. Ramley stripped by Leverett. The ball comes right back to the Indians. Trailing by two. Look at a tire take the lead. Alex Dews hands off to Rammel. Gets a ball screen from Patch. Doesn't use it. Jump stop just inside the three-point line. Swirls around, but the offensive rebound by Dews. The putback off the mark. Ramley comes out with the rebound. Excellent effort there by Dews. Another offensive board. Wide open three for Hess. Hits. And that tries to get them off the schneid. Exactly. And the whole Marion local contingent fans, coaches, and players happy to see that three-pointer go down. Flyers faithful on a carry, didn't get it. Ball still loose, grabbed by Kneekamp. Five-point lead for Marion Local. Flyers play without Jack Kanapke currently in the lineup. As Austin Kneekamp holds at the top of the key. And with Jack out of the game, they're going with a little bit more of an open post offense. No, nope. Kneekamp will post, but then he'll jump out. Three on the way from Ramley's good, and back-to-back -back threes for the Flyers as they're faithful, excited that their tables have turned. Yeah, Ramley kisses that one off the glass, and when you're one for 18, <laughs> and then you hit your next two, you'll take them any way you can, but man, that might get them really rolling here from distance, and Fort Recovery gonna have to play a little tougher defense now on the perimeter. Lemaret got the lob there, you see on the Wabash Mutual instant replay. As Kneekamp got the knee out just a hair. Second foul committed by Kneekamp. So Indians lob to the top of the key to Ramble. Into the far corner. Ooh, Hess thought he had all ball as the shot attempt from Reese Guggenbiller. We'll see. Good penetration to the elbow. He got a, got a little bit of arm there. Yeah, and he came across too. Wasn't straight up. First foul committed by Hess. Scoogan Miller's first free throw attempt is up and good. So that is the fourth foul committed here of the first half by Marion Local, still with one minute remaining in this first quarter. Scoogan yeah, Miller, this is just his fifth and sixth free throw of the year. Missed the second, keeps it at 14 7. As Pullman will rise and fire for three. The old heat check didn't fall, and a defensive rebound corralled by Fort Recovery. They'll push the tempo momentarily as they try to get it to Guggenbiller, poked out of bounds. Off of Mitchell Ranley. It'll stay with Fort Recovery. 
A good job of forward recovery, pushing tempo there to see what they have. And a deflection, they stay with it. Marion local, Marion local able to recover. For recovery, looks to inbound. Does to Leverett. Bounces to Riggs Toby underneath the bucket. Back out to Leverett in the far corner with 45. Indians patiently surveying the Marion local defense. They'll lob down low to Ramel at the block. Draws a lot of attention, and you see why. Nice finish there by Ramel. 14-9, four points on the evening for Kale Ramel. Ryan Holman sprints past the defenders, bounces. Spin move from Ramley off the heel. Kanapke pokes it back up and in. That's another area Kanapke has improved so much is just tipping the basketball back up towards the rim. Finishes there. Had a tip in against the Cougars of Van Wert to win the game. Ball stolen away. Easy layup in transition for Eink at the horn. And the quarter ends with Marion Local extending the lead to 18-9. You see the Wabash instant replay. Turnover at a tough time for the Indians leads to an easy bucket for the Flyers, and they lead after one here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, division of alts, seamless spouting. Dave Bowen, got a look at uh, some first quarter numbers for us? Yeah, Marion Local 57% from the floor, 8 for 14, Fort Recovery 40%. And as we continue to look at that, uh, rebounds, Marion Local with seven for recovery with eight. The Flyers with one turnover, recovery with three. Hess at the top of the key. Thought about the three, gives to Kneekamp, looking to get it to Kanapke. Gets back to Hess. Flyers patient offensively. Get back to Hess, now get it to Kanapke. Creates a little space, got in a tough spot, goes out of bounds off of him, and will go to the Indians. Nice rotation over by Daniel Patch. We're going to see it on the replay. The ball gets into Kanapke. Patch comes over and helps the double team. Kanapke unable to connect with the backboard and get the ball to fall for him. Out of bounds. Goes off of him. Fort recovery basketball. Indians trying to make some hay. Trailing by nine. They get to the window. Easy bucket there for Troy Holman's first basket of the evening. Yeah, for recoveries, had some success penetrating the lane a little bit. Do it right there again to begin the second quarter. Good bucket for number 10, Troy Holman. Hess holds it above his head into the near corner to Holman. Flyers looking to extend the lead. Knee can't post it up. Instead, they'll give it to Kanapke. Only shot one three-pointer on the season. As Holman will bring it to the block. Kneecap step back three. No. Ping pongs around and lands in the hands of Holman. And for recovery has no desire to push on this possession. They want to come down and execute it in the half court. Again, reverse the ball a couple times and then look for those driving lanes, Garrett. Now Bob Leverett told us they wanted to control the pace. I think they've, they've done that here in this first half. As they try to get it in the near corner to Riggs Toby, poked out of bounds. And it will go to the Flyers. Yeah, Rick Toby tried to act like he didn't yeah. touch the ball, but unable to pull off the acting job. No Emmy tonight. It did go off his hands. Marion local basketball. Hess still in the backcourt, crosses the timeline. Throws right to Ike into the rear corner. Knee camp at the top of the key. Swings left to Holman. Had a screen. Instead, will come to the high post back to Knee camp. Thought about the three. Instead, Pullman, Holman, excuse me. Pullman fires for three and buries it. Yeah, Luke Pullman, he, he shoots 25% from out there, but he can get on a streak, and right now he nails that one. And Mar Marion Local flat out said we have to shoot the ball from three better than we did one for 15 last Saturday. A couple already here in this first half. As Patch, the bank's still open. One three for another. You're right. Marion Local said we're not going to back off from shooting that. And we've got to be able to make that shot so teams have to guard us on the perimeter. That'll make us that much stronger inside for Big Jack Kanapke. But you're right. Nice three-pointer there by Daniel Patch at the other end. Trying to lob down low to Kanapke. Threw it right to the hands of Rammel. And he'll push it as, about as quickly as we've seen for recovery. Push it. Cross-court pass. Leads to a wide open three for post. Bang! Nicely done. Landon Post took his time, made sure his puppies were set, and finishes it with the three. Back-to-back -back threes for the Indians. Cuts the lead to four. 21-17 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. 
Ike sprints past the defender, tried to leave it off to Kanapke, stolen away by Fort Recovery once more. Ramble to the high post. Gives to post. Heat check. No. Hess the board. Yeah, like you said, heat check there. See what he's got going. Pullman thought about the three. Will rise and fire from the short corner. Tough angle. Couldn't get it, but the rebound lands in the hands of the Indians. Yeah, a couple deflections there, and then they get the defensive board and attack. Holman blocked. Sent right back to him by Hess, and it lands in the hands of Neekamp. Marion Local wants to run just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, pace is picking up here in the middle of the second quarter. Ink looked at the rim, bounces to Kanapke instead. Kanapke in the lane, and the foul. Big, big drop step by Jack Kanapke to the middle of the floor. We're going to see it here on the replay. Keeps his head up, then good drop step through two defenders, draws the foul, hooping the harm, Garrett. Kanapke going to go to the line for the old-fashioned three-point play. First foul committed by Reese Guggenbiller. Kanapke a 61% free throw shooter. 6'9", Jr. looking for his ninth point of the evening. Can't hit. Score remains 23-17. Indians come back the other way. Post gives to Rammel in the high post. Back to the basket. Patch pump faked on the three. Picks up the dribble and gives right to Holman. Looking for Rammel. Tightly guarded by Niekamp in the far corner. He'll put up a contested three and hit. Nice patience by Kale Rammel. Couple dribbles to get behind the arc and finishes it. I like the ball movement. It was all on one side of the floor, but it was snapping. That ball was on fire. Good ball movement by Fort Recovery. Leads to the three-point field goal. Three and a half to go here in this first half. 23-20. Fort Recovery sticking around. Every time they've gotten down, they've clawed right back in as the Flyers try to slap it to Kanapke. An errant pass gives the basketball right back to the boys in white. You're right. Yeah. Great observation, Garrett, of how Fort Recovery is playing within themselves. And, and Kale Rammel right there. Nothing but the bottom of the net for three. Three-point game, a chance to tie with another trifecta. Daniel Patch will take a seat on the bench for Fort Recovery as they'll make a couple of substitutions here as we approach three minutes to go in the half. Indians can tie with a three-pointer here. Holman slowly walks the ball across the timeline, gets it across in the 10 seconds allotted, goes straight to the window, hangs, can't hit. I don't know how that didn't go down there. <laughs> I saw it at the bottom of the net and it popped out. Unfortunate bounce on the home rim for the Indians. It's a wide open three for Hess off the front iron. Ball loose, goes out of bounds off the Indians. It'll stay with the Flyers. And probably we've been remiss in not mentioning Jaden Mesher for Marion Local. He is the second leading scorer, leads them in three-point shooting uh, at 41%, un or 44%. Unable to play this evening. He's got a broken nose, but Coach Miller shared with me that he looked to have him back early next week, and he will play next weekend if all goes well. Hess holds the basketball, gives to Ranley. He's getting a few little extra run here with Jaden Mesher missing some time. Take advantage of those opportunities. Makes you deeper down the road when you can fight through those injuries. And he hit a three earlier in this first half, and it's a three-point lead. Zone being employed by the Indians. Exactly, 2-3 variety. Hess on a right wing. Flyers content just to work it around a perimeter. Yeah, content is the great word to use right there. Very patient. Flyers get somebody in the high post. As Pullman now has it at the right wing. Indian faithful trying to hype up their Dees. Played a long possession here. Teardrop floater for Ramley. No, Ramble the board. And the Fort Recovery faithful very help, happy with that defensive possession. They attack offensively. Leverett got in a tough spot, able to pass out of it. As Post will drive baseline far side. Gives back to Holman. Thought about the three for just a moment instead. They'll lob down a little Ramble. Ramble stripped as he went to make the pass in the corner. And that's a lucky defensive possession there for the Flyers. Yeah, Mitchell Ranley does it defensively, rotates over, knocks that ball away. Creates the turnover. Indians go back man to man. As Ryan Holman passes out of a tough spot. Hess on the left wing, guarded by Leverett. Still looking. Picks up the dribble, hands off to Pullman. Contested three for Pullman, bang! 
That's his second of the game, I believe. Nicely done by Luke Pullman. Exactly one minute to go here in this first half. Six-point advantage and a foul committed by Pullman after the main basket. Hey, I just hit my second three. I'm going to be aggressive <laughs> on defense. Picks up the personal. We see him step right there into his shot. Good possession for Marion Local. Good ball movement. Pullman with the three. And we, we mentioned Kirk Guttemore told us, hey, we've got to shoot the ball better from three. They undeniably have done that here in this first half. Yeah, they, they definitely have. Uh, the neat thing, again, for us as fans of the game, Fort Recovery is hung tough with yep. it. They're only six down here. It looks like they're going to hold it for the last shot at this point in time. Holman at the high right point, guarded by Kanapke. Gives off to Rammel. Works against Hess. Leverett tightly guarded back to Rammel. Under 30 to go. Indians will back back out. Just being patient. I don't think Coach Leverett, he may call for that one shot now, but I think they were looking to score, but now it's down around 15 seconds. Let's see what they get. Holman to the window. Gets it off the rim. Rebound to Hess with 10. Holman's been able to penetrate to the left side, but he's been going up against the trees then. Hasn't been able to finish. Kanapke holds with two. Deep three for Ramley. No. And that'll do it for the first half of play. Full recovery, hanging around. Clawed back into this game a couple of times. Marion Local leads by six at the break here on WOSN. Second half about to get underway here in this Midwest Athletic Conference matchup where the Marion Local Flyers have a six-point advantage over the Fort Recovery Indians. I'm Garrett Seawright, and with a look at some first-half stats, here's Dave Bowen. Yeah, you know, the score's tight, 26-20, and so are the statistics. Marion Local shooting 48% from the floor. Four for 11 from three at 36%. That's better than their last game. Fort Recovery, four for seven from three-point distance, 57%. That's one of the reasons why they're right there as far as the score's concerned. They've shot 35% in the first half. Free throws, 0 for 1, Marion Local, 2 for 4 for the Indians. The rebounding battle, we talked about that in the pregame. Right now, Fort Recovery owns a one rebound uh, edge, 11 to 10 in favor of the Indians, both teams with five turnovers. So the stats really are as tight as the scoreboard is as the Indians look to cut the lead here to begin this third quarter on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Leverett with his back to the basket will turn at corner. To the block and stepped on the end line. Yeah, right there. I know Coach Leverett wants to see his team continue to penetrate, and right there, Rex does, but got to be under control and then look for that outside or that inside out pass. They just weren't able to connect because Rex had stepped out of bounds first. Kanapke throws left to Ink. Hess trying to get it down low to knee camp does. Tight ball pressure stolen away by Troy Holman. It's a great defensive play made by the six-foot junior. Yeah, doubles down on the post and able to rip the basketball away for recovery with a, another opportunity. We start the third quarter, a turnover for each team. Holman turns a corner, tried to get the hoop and the harm, got the harm, and he'll step to the free throw line to shoot two. First four minutes of the third quarter, huge for both squads. In the, trying to do what you want to do and making the adjustments. And I think we've seen right away for recovery is going to look to attack the basket a little bit harder. They've penetrated on both possessions. Again, you got to be under control because you're going in there with 6'9", Jack Kanapke, 6'8", Austin Ekamp. Draw them and make the flyer defense rotate and find the open man behind the arc. And Holman averages two points a game now up at three. And, you know, maybe Marion Local thinks he's not a, necessarily a threat to try to turn that corner and catch him off guard a bit as the Flyers a little under siege there as the rebound pulled down by K.O. Rammel. Indian faithful wanted to travel. Doesn't matter. They end up with a basketball. Rammel, step back, gives to post. Screen from Rammel. They'll hold it high above his head. Throws left to Holman. Leverett working. Gives to Holman. All five guys moving for the Indians. Patch to post for three. No. Great positioning there by Holman to have a chance to get the offensive rebound, but he couldn't corral it. It goes out of bounds off of him. Yeah, whenever you get everybody moving like they just did there offensively, you're going to get a good look, and they did, just unable to connect. 26-21. So Another point for all the big bodies out here. This is a really clean game, yeah. Garrett. Nobody's in foul trouble. Haven't nobody gotten a bonus? Kanapke's second three of the year off the heel. Rebound grabbed by Patch. 
Konafke just basically said, if you're going to give me that much space, I'm going to take it. And Patch will do the same thing. Just like Konafke left it long. Long rebound comes out to Niekamp. Pullman picks it up, gives to Hess. Niekamp in the corner, back to Hess. Trying Kanapke to get a Konafke, yeah. yep. Nice defense by Patch. Ball's stolen away. Or I just poked loose, I should say. Floater. Kanapke there for the offensive rebound and putback. Give him double figures, which he's hit in every game so far in his junior season. And does so much damage on the offensive glass. Again, the defense had to rotate a little bit with the penetration by Austin Niekamp. Gave Jack Kanapke a clean lane to the backboard. Rammel for three. Kale Rammel had seven points in the first half. Heading towards his average of 23 and change. And as we said, he leads the Mac in that category. And we saw, once again, Marion Local grows the lead a little bit. And a timely three-point basket from Fort Recovery shrinks the lead right back to four. Yeah, keep hanging around. Give yourself an opportunity. And that's what the Indians are doing right now. Pullman for three. No. Kanapke, the offensive rebound. Quick putback blocked by Rammel. Great offensive rebound. Great defense on the shot by Kanapke. Ramble with the block. Holman on the right wing. I love it down there. Big boy basketball. Post at the top of the key. Gives back to Patch. As Holman surveys. He'll work to the middle of the floor. Gives to Ramble. As you said, surveys, both teams, the players all have their heads up. Their eyes are surveying the whole floor, probing, seeing what they can find, an open teammate in any way, shape, or form. Ramble, a great pass, but it's poked away by Luke Pullman. A great pass, but a better defensive play as then Ramble gets the interception on the other end. Yeah, one turnover deserves another, unfortunately. Both coaches got to be a little upset with that. Got to take care of the rock. Holman went to attack the basket, thought better of it after he realized he was attacking 6'9", Jack Kadamke. Six foot versus six nine, not maybe necessarily the matchup that the Indians would like. Yeah, we know where the odds lie on that one. Rammel pulls out Hass, puts it on the deck. Kale Rammel blocked by Hass. Long outlet pass from Kanapke to Niekamp. Got too deep underneath the hoop, and he hit the bottom of the rim. He's coming up like he's hurting a little bit. I don't know if he area. slipped a little bit. Yeah. Three on the way, off the heel. After the deep attempt from Holman, hits the guide wire. So Mitchell Ranley comes back in for Niekamp, who we mentioned hurting just a little bit. Going to have a chance to take some rest with 341 on the outdoor, ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Yeah, both teams going up and down the floor, Fort Recovery in the 2-3 zone. Just a 4-2 quarter right now in favor of the Indians halfway through. Has to the top of the key. Gets to Ranley, looking to get to Kanapke. Instead, surveys Hess. Still trying to feed Kanapke down low. Nearly stripped. And a bullet pass to Kanapke. Double teamed. Back to Ranley. And a foul committed by Patch. Yeah, I just think it's going to be beneficial to Marion Local to work through Jack Kanapke. And again, don't force it in there, but keep the ball moving and let him post up. And that was good inside-out action. They draw the foul on Patch, maintain possession. And correct me if I'm wrong here, but Kanapke's not panicking when he gets the ball either. He's, he's played really calm, cool, collected down there. You're spot on, Garrett. Just doing a nice job. Again, he keeps his head up. Here's a lob to him. He can't hit on the lob attempt as Leverett grabs the rebound, but when they've gotten it to him and he's had that token pressure or a double team, he hasn't panicked and tried to you know, make a bad pass out of it. He's done a nice job with the ball down low as the Indians get it in the lane. They'll lob back out to the top of the key to Holman. Working against Kanapke to the right block. Lobs back out to Ramble on the right way. Ramble wants a screen. Gets it. Double team. Bounces to Holman at the right elbow. Lobs back out to Ramble. We're seeing a different Holman here in the second half on his penetration, jump stopping and looking for a teammate. Great decision making here, the great adjustment second half for Holman. Holman on the right wing. Fires a bullet pass to Toby. Riggs Toby in a far corner. Gets back to Rammel. Long possession for the Indians. Toby, jump stop, airballed it. Goes to the Flyers. Might have been a deflection on that. Might have been a blocked shot, but yeah, defensive rebound by the Flyers. Here they come. Hess leaves off to Ranley. Bounces to Pullman. 
Court recovery, staying in the 2-3 zone. Flyers, or at least Brandon Eink, wants the basketball on the high post, gets it. Operates out of there, leans. Can't hit, but Kanapke's put back, no. Right back to Eink. He puts it up in the foul. There's some offensive rebounding again. Kanapke with a couple of tips. And then number 15 for the Flyers, Brandon Eink scores and gets fouled. Let's take a look at the Wabash instant replay on the previous possession. We'll see if there is a little contact there on the wrist, you see, that altered that shot. And then on the other end, Brandon Eink can't hit. Kanapke's put back, no, but right back to him. Missed the free throw, by the way, but he leans in, hits to extend the lead to six. So the Indians want to run just a little bit here. As Toby's cross-court pass to Holman. And we got a timeout called by the Fort Recovery Indians. Trailing by six with just over 90 seconds to play in the third quarter here on WOSN. Instant replays tonight are provided by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. And we've had some great looks at those instant replays tonight, thanks to Wabash and our WOSN crew. And Fort Recovery takes a timeout here. Dave, what do you think the message is to, from Bob Leverett to his squad? Well, I think he's setting up a set play offensively, but more importantly, going to talk about the offensive rebounds they've given up at the other end. As we said, a key to this game, rebounding. They cannot allow the Flyers to have second and third opportunities as they've had a couple times in this third quarter. Patch works to the right wing, gives to Holman. Gets right back to Patch. Looking to lob to Rammel, does. Lands in the hands of Toby, thought about the three. Patch will let it fly, no. Ball ping-pongs around, thrown back into play by Toby, but it goes right to the hands of Mitchell Ranley. Flyers back the other way. Hess holds. Bounce to Camp In the lane. Shot put up by Holman. Foul committed, and he'll shoot two. Again, Marion Local working through the post offensively right there. Give and go. We see it on the replay. Camp passes the basketball to number three, Ryan Holman. Finds himself at the free throw line. Holman's first point of the evening makes it 31-24. Left the second one short. Rammel, the board for Fort Recovery. So under a minute to go here in this third quarter. It's a seven-point lead for the Flyers. Just four points scored here in the quarter by Fort Recovery. Looking to add to it. Got in a tough spot, did Alex Dews. Threw it into the backcourt and an over a back violation by the Indians. Yeah, Ryan Holman makes himself known defensively as well right there, denying the pass and creates the over and back situation. Marion Local is going to take over possession on the turnover. 41 seconds left in the quarter. Let's see if the Flyers look to get a bucket right away here if they pull it out and try and get a last shot and gain a little momentum with a make. So Hess will inbound along the near sideline. He'll just lob it in to Mitchell Ramley. Gives it right back to Hess. And he'll hold for a moment. Kirk got him over there. You see in the bottom left corner of your screen. Telling the Flyers to move. They'll run the offense with 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Hess holds. Looks like they're going to be patient and look to go with the last shot at this point in time. Coach Miller calling the set. Hess. Fires a bullet pass out of bounds. It goes to full recovery. And uh, they looked to score there, but they held it for the last turnover, unfortunately. <laughs> Let's see what the Indians can do with 14.9. Flyers send Brandon Eink to the scoreboard to check in, or scores table, I should say, to Luke, check in for Luke Pullman. So under 15 to go in the quarter. Rammel brings it across the timeline, averaging 24 points a contest with 10 here so far. Fires a pass to Holman. Post with four. Back to the basket. Hangs. Can't hit. And that'll do it for the third quarter. Marion Local outscores Fort Recovery 5-4 to four in the quarter and gives them a 31-24 advantage after three here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts Seamless Spoutings. And I don't know if you've ever seen those pergolas, Dave. 
I got to get me one. They are fancy. They are spectacular pergolas. So. Yeah, they're they're very nice, and my wife has seen them, and she's <laughs> made sure that I know. <laughs> that they're that nice, and then she, yes. she would love one, man. Mm -hmm. I, I'm right there with her. They are fantastic. Fourth quarter underway, 31-24. Flyers with the basketball in a lead. Here's Ike. Works it around the perimeter. This is a 2-1-2 zone or 2-3 zone? I think they're still in the 2-3. We'll patch it in the middle of the floor. There we see it, yeah. Say Patch stepped up to that high post there just a little bit. As the Flyers try to split the zone. Shot from Ike off the mark. Kale Rammel grabs the board. In Those that third quarter, we didn't see a whole lot of offense. No. Marion Local 2 for 8 from the floor for 25%. Leverett gets Pressure. some positioning and yep. puts it up and in. And they start one for one in the fourth after being two for eight in the third as well. Nine rebounds for Marion Local and seven for Fort Recovery. So we're still pretty even right there at the rebounding level. Uh, just going to see how it plays out. Both teams had three turnovers. So that third quarter felt a little tighter. Is that is that coaching? Is that player awareness? Is that just you know having a, a little break and you you lose some of your some of your juice, what what do you attribute maybe that offensive stalling there in that third quarter to? I just really attribute that these teams know each other. These kids know each other. They've played against each other, and they're really, really just trying to probe and find what they can find, and it's been a challenge both ways. No look pass in the corner to Ramley for three. Short rebound to Rammel. That was a big boy re rebound for Kale Rammel. Here come the Flyers with a... They've cut it to five with that first bucket. See if they can do some more damage, put on a little run. Contested three from the corner. Short offensive rebound, though, to post. Rammel got the hoop and the foul. Nice pass from his teammate, Landon Post. Gets Kale Rammel in a point where he can score it, and the defense is at a disadvantage. We see it on the replay. Nice bounce pass there. Good finish. Number 12, Tate Hess, picks up the personal foul. That's great positioning there by Rammel. Goes up with strength. And now looks to convert the old-fashioned three-point play and does. Does so. The 67% free throw shooter second on this Indian squad. Cuts the lead to two. Here we go. Hess. Lobs. Randley. Kneecamp cross-court pass. Pullman thought about the three for a long time. Instead, Kneekamp lobs to Kanapke, balls loose, and a foul committed by the Indians. And there's some high-low action. We haven't seen that all night, but obviously with the height that Marion Local possesses, they can do that. We see it on the replay. Kneekamp lobs it up to his teammate, Kanapke. I think we may see more of that here in the fourth quarter. Just the first foul crit picked up by Kale Rammel. As Pullman got up in the air, was stripped, able somehow to fire up a shot still off the mark. And rebound comes down to the Indians, who can tie or take the lead. Yeah, good quick hands by the Indian defense. Creates that tough look. They get the defensive rebound, keeping uh, Marion Local Mary from getting an offensive board. Leverett backdoor pass off the hands of Reese Guggenbiller and out of play. We'll see if that proves to be a costly turnover. As the Flyers will make a substitution as Brandon Knight comes back in for Mitchell Ramley. Yeah, you're right. Now Mary, or Fort Recovery is going to show a little three-quarter court pressure. Marion Local breaks it like they traditionally do without a dribble. Do a real nice job there. Flyers still haven't put the ball on the deck as Ike holds working against the zone. Stripped by Leverett. They'll stay with the Flyers. The defensive intensity has been there the whole night for both squads. It's been really fun to watch, and it's been, as we said, clean defense. They... They aren't fouling, they aren't hacking, they aren't banging bodies real hard, just really working at it. And only six total fouls so far here in this second half. As the Flyers work the ball around a perimeter, Kanapke stands on a right wing, holds to knee camp. Eink with a path to the basket, stops in a short corner instead. Pullman off a screen in a lane, floater. Hits every bit of the rim and drops home. Penetration by Luke Pullman gets to the rim and finishes. Under control for recovery, not in the position to be able to take a charge. Holman on the right wing, guarded by Kanapke, throws left. Leverett in the far corner, tightly guarded, fires a pass off the mark to Rammel. Yeah, it was definitely a situation there where Fort Recovery was going to look for Rammel. We see here's the replay of Pullman getting to the 10. Uses a lot of real estate up there. Yes. 
puts her in for two. Great look at that Wabash instant replay. Indians take up three-quarter court once more. A little 2-2-1 action, just trying to mess with the tempo, but there's a nice pass to Niekamp. Niekamp double team, nearly stripped. Hook shot off the mark. Kanapke the board, his put back, no, but he's fouled. And then Kanapke shoves, he shoved Kale Rammel and picks up a technical foul. After the play ended, you'll see here, Kanapke comes down, fouled by Patch, tried to go up and he shoves Rammel. Yeah, and I've noticed that just here towards the uh, end of the game here in the fourth quarter. It's something they, they exchange uh, polite yeah, shoves, yes, if we, you will, down at the other end, but this time they picked it up. So we're going to shoot the two-shot foul first, and then we'll go down to the other end and shoot the technicals. But you do it in the order in which it occurred. So Kanapke hits the first free throw, and it's a little different for Kanapke where, you know, he's shooting essentially a technical free throw as well that, you know, he's standing there and makes both of them. So not affected, obviously, but that can be a little throw you off your game that, you know, you're standing there by yourself to shoot him as well. Yep. And he does a nice job drilling both of those. And now Landon Post, the 76% free throw shooter for the Indians, leading free throw shooter for the team. He's going to shoot the technical fouls. Post hits the first, giving him four points on the evening. Cuts the lead back down to five on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. And he got them both. So tip for tat, but it will be Fort Recovery basketball at half court. And it also gives everybody, you know, a chance to we shoot four free throws and get everybody separated, let cooler heads prevail here just a little bit. So Ramo will inbound at the midcourt stripe. 420 remaining. Indians trail by four. As Holman works to the left. Patch in the middle of the floor. Back to Holman. In the high post, backs back out. Patch will hold. Dangerous pass poked out of bounds by Pullman. It'll stay with the Indians. Yeah, Pullman able to get a hand on that because, again, uh, Fort Recovery got a little stagnant on this side of the floor. He was able to deflect that. 35-31. Post bounces to Rammel. Double teamed, fouled. Good strength by Kale Rammel to take care of that basketball and draw the contact. The fourth foul committed by the Flyers here at a half. Going to be a common foul. This is the time of the game. You're going to run your best under out of bounds sets and see what the Indians come up with. On the right wing, Post. Then a double screen coming from the back side. And off to Holman. Nicely defended by the Flyers. Rammel posting up in the lane. Wants it. Didn't get it. Has to come out. He'll rise and fire for three. No. Patch tries to get a fingertip on it. Luckily for the Indians, it goes out of bounds off of a flyer. See what under out of bounds set they run now. Coach Leverett. And in Dave, his first season, again, uh, Fort Recovery alum. Dave, we've seen Marion Local go to that quick shot in the lane off the off the inbound underneath their own basket. How do you decide when or where or if to go to that? Well, you just got to look at time and, and distance and see if that's where you want to go. Great rebound by Kanapke, but then they throw it out of bounds. Rammel the shot, Kanapke the board. Threw it to Hess, goes through his hands. And for recovery, will hold on to the basketball. Timeout called on the floor by Bob Leverett, the Fort Recovery head coach. They trail by four with under three and a half to go here on WOSN. Instant replays tonight brought to you by Wamash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. 35-31 to score here in his fourth quarter. And got a great slate of basketball games for you upcoming. Uh, first, you yeah, See the upcoming schedule for Marion Local. Doesn't get any easier tomorrow night. A great Jackson Center squad. The Flyers will make the short trip into Shelby County there, and then a pair of Mac squads uh, on the schedule with St. Henry and Parkway still to come as well. And you take a look at Fort Recovery. They're at Graham tomorrow, Tri-Village on Tuesday, and then they'll face off with St. Henry again. The Indians have lost four in a row, trying to avoid five in a row tonight here, and that schedule doesn't look any easier the deeper we go into the season. It doesn't. They got the ball out of bounds. Coach Leverett with the timeout. They got to look to run a good set here to 
Mary Locos led this whole game, but Fort Recovery just, they, they're right on the verge. Yeah. They just need to turn that corner, if you will. Down four, great possession here. Let's see what they can do with it. Holman at the top of the key, all by his lonesome for three. Left it well short. Maybe he had too much time to size it up. Had time, and then he had the 6'9", Kanapke coming at him. Might have heard footsteps a little bit right there. Riggs Toby interjected in the ball game as Reese Guggenbiller takes the seat. Also, Rex Leverett will come to the floor in an exchange for Daniel Patch for recovery. Baseball pass inbound to Kanapke. Break the pressure. Get in their half court set. Foul committed by Toby. That'll be the sixth committed by Fort Recovery here, so the next one since the Flyers to the line. Mary Local leads by five. Four, excuse me. I can count. And the game's have been clean, as we've said, and now Fort Recovery is going to pick up their defensive intensity, so it's going to look like maybe a foul that isn't a foul may appear to be one just because of the difference in gonna, intensity. Hey, close the gap a yes, little bit, exactly. play a little tighter. They'll allow uh -huh. him to Kanapke. Got in a tough spot and is able to somehow get in position to put up a shot. He's got 14. The old Mike and drill right there does a nice job of using the right hand on the left side of the rim underneath and finishes. Shot from lane and post, no. And the ball's loose. And I think that's going to be a foul on the Indians. So San Marion local to the line. A foul committed by Riggs Toby. So Flyers shooting the front end of the one and one from here on out. 63% as a team. Eink will step to the line as a 55% free throw shooter. Guggenbiller and Patch going to come back in for four recovery. As you see the 6'1 senior hoping to shoot free th two free throws. Yeah, they're going to be huge down the stretch here. They always are, but again, seven, six point lead, a chance to extend it. Mike does so right there. Give him seven points on the evening. That's average is three. Yes, and that's going to create more pressure on Fort Recovery to have a solid, quick possession down here at the other end. But he misses the second. But there's Kanapke with the offensive board, Garrett. Kanapke, we've, we've called it several times where he's just been in the right position and has had the, the right size to get those offensive rebounds. And now he'll shoot two after he was fouled on the putback attempt. You know, obviously he is the tallest player out on the floor, but he still does a great job of moving and rebounding uh, and not just standing or trying to go over the defense. He had good footwork there, was able to get around the Fort Recovery Indian defender and get to the offensive glass. Kanaki grows the lead to eight, 39-38. As Rammel gives to Guggenbiller for three, missed the rim. Now a chase for the basketball, goes out of bounds. They'll say it goes out of bounds off of the Indians. Good hustle by both players right there. The Fort Recovery contingent, they felt like maybe that was off the flyer right there, but I'm not certain that they don't have a case, yeah. but nonetheless, nonetheless, it's been a well-officiated game It sure tonight. has, absolutely. Has between the circles to Pullman. Flyers taking their time with an eight-point lead and 2.15 to go. Yeah, it's not really in the deep freeze here, but again, Marion Local is going to be all the more patient and look for a 90% look. Post to the foul. Got his hands, hand between the arms of Pullman, trying to strip that basketball loose. And Luke Pullman, an 80% free throw shooter. He's going to go to the line. A limited number of free throws this year, but he is hitting them. Eight for ten in the season thus far. And he got the first. Holman having a nice night. Averages four. He's at nine right now looking for point number ten. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Flyers step up in the absence of Jaden Mesher again here. You've mentioned that we've had the, several players going above their average. And uh, Jack Kanepke, he is right at it at 15 points. Got a little condensation on the floor. Kale Rammel's done everything else today for full recovery. Might as well grab a mop and... Wipe up the floor a little bit right underneath the basket. Yeah, he gets a nice applause from his classmates in the Fort Recovery student section. High school basketball, you got to love it, Garrett. Pullman back at the line. 
Throws the lead to 10. And a timeout called by Kurt Guttermuller of Marion Local. We'll keep it here as the Flyers have a 10-point advantage and take a look at some of the rankings in the state of Ohio. You see Defiance up there having a great season. Ottawa Glandorf ranked well in the Associated Press. And then the Martin RPI, which is the computer system, believes that the Crest Unites are the second-best team in the state in Division IV. Yeah, they're right up there. They're having an outstanding year. They had a solid win this evening against the Jefferson Wildcats in Northwest Conference action. Jackson Center, one loss on the season. Of course, we mentioned earlier, Marion Local will go to the Habitat of the Cat tomorrow night to play Scott Elkert's squad. But you see that representation there in Division Four. We've got a lot of good small school basketball in the area. That's what Northwest Ohio is known for, Garrett. And then we have the Martin RPI, which is new this year. It's created a lot of discussion, and that will be used when it comes time to seed the basketball teams come it's tournament time. Basically the high school basketball version of the BCS, which everybody loved back in the day, uh, <laughs> is yeah. Landon Post fouled us, it drove to the bucket. But it's, it's a nice way also to somewhat guard against, you know, collusion is a big word, but collusion. Collusion, or let's, let's go down this road as well, who I've seen and who I haven't seen. Yeah. You know, because Sometimes it's hard to vote for a team that you haven't played against. Well, Maybe you've seen for them on instance, the scout. in Division Three, you know, the the district stretches from you know Coldwater to yep. Riverdale. Yep. Um, you know, you're not going to see uh, some of the schools that Riverdale plays if you're if you're Coldwater or you're Bluffton or um, you know a jump ball called here. But it, it's it's a it's a kind of a foolproof way, I guess, to to guard against a, a lack of information that you're just inputting information to the computer and let it spit it out for you. Couldn't agree with you more, Garrett. Great points and. They may do some adjusting and refining yeah. as we go from year to year uh, in order to try and make it more applicable and just really feel solid about it. Rammel's jumper off the heel of the rim. Pullman in a tough spot in the backcourt. Fires a pass to Hess. Fingertips it. Gives to camp at a far corner. Double teamed. And is able to get out of it to Eink. Now foul committed by Leverett. And it's been a while since Fort Recovery has hit a bucket. And that's been one of the situations that has created this lead for Marion Local. They have held the basketball now, getting fouled. And the free throw has been the, the cleanest shot here in the second half for both squads because they have guarded each other in the five-on-five -five situation. Yeah, and that first half kind of felt each other out a little bit where we mentioned that Fort Recovery, you know, hit some timely threes to stay in the game. Marion Local really clamped down on that here in the second half. Absolutely. They were really out on the uh, ball handlers and shooters for Fort Recovery behind the arc. Pullman continues to shoot well from the line. Now up to 12 tonight with five of them coming at the free throw line. And I've been in this unenviable position on a coaching staff where you've got to score and you're going against that Marion Local Tall, strong, and solid defense. And right there, Fort Recovery comes up empty again. Leverett couldn't drop it in. As the foul committed by Rammel on the rebound attempt. So Hess will go to the line this time. Shooting two. You see a look at the upcoming schedule here on WOSN. PG at Arlington in a Blanchard Valley Conference matchup. Northwest Conference action between Spencerville and Columbus Grove. And then a great crosstown shootout between Shawnee and Lima Sr. It's a free throw, a free throw attempt from Hess. Good. His fourth point this evening. Yeah, that's who Marion Local wants at the line. He's perfect tonight and 74% overall, the leading free throw shooter for the Flyers. You look at some of those schools upcoming, Fort Lormie and Bath, two of the most storied girls basketball programs in the state. Spencerville, Delphi St. John's, some great freshmen in the classes there at Spencerville and Delphi St. John's. So some good basketball coming up here on WOSN the rest of this weekend. Rammel at the left wing. Post for three, no. Kanapke grabs the rebound, and he's fouled. We're going to walk down to the other end where Jack Kanapke's going to shoot two because the Flyers are in the double bonus. Still just over a minute to go, and then you see what's coming up next week. Marion Local Parkway Girls Basketball, LCC Wapak, and then a good NWC matchup between Lipsick and Delphus Jefferson. Yeah, both of those teams undefeated. That's going to be huge as far as who wins the Northwest Conference on the girls' side. And you'll see what's coming up next Friday as well as Kanapke swishes another free throw attempt. Patrick Henry and Wasion upcoming on WOSN. 
get some Putnam County League action as well between Ottaville and Kaleida. Ramble on the right wing, contested three, missed everything. Punched back into play, but it lands in the hands of Kanapke. He's stripped. So when people see this score in the paper tomorrow, they're going to think, whoa, Marion Local just took care of Fort Recovery. Yeah. Well, this game, as <laughs> I know it's a cliche, but it's true. It much closer than what the final score is going to indicate. And also, credit to Marion Local, they've hit their free throws down a stretch here. They, uh, they have shot pretty well here from the charity stripe to, to extend that lead to make it look like, you know, Fort Recovery didn't hang with Marion Local, and I, I think they absolutely did. Yes, yes. And you're right, they have nailed their free throws down the stretch. That's what a championship team does. Kadapke averages 15 points, eight rebounds a contest at 17 now. Just a guess he's over eight rebounds, I would say, on the evening. Might have four or five offensive rebounds. As Kyle Ungren will come in the ball game now for Marion Local. As conceivably, Brandon Ike will take a seat for the final time. Under a minute to go. Jack Kanapke, he's had a real good game. Uh, talking to Coach Godemiller before the game, he, he's been dealing with some lower leg issues, and they limited him in practice this week, but he's he's come to play like he does every night, brings his lunch pail and goes to work. And he'll step out for what we assume is the final time with 18 points. Several of them coming from the free throw line. As Kyle Otte comes in the ball game. 48-32. Holman on the right wing, gives to Patch, thought about the contested three. Holman in the high post, to the window, no. Rebound pulled down by Kneekamp. And looks like full recovery. And we'll get a timeout to get some substitutions on the floor. Is an unidentified flyer comes on. Yep, we'd love to recognize him, but we don't have right, a number 21. Number 21. On the main thing is he's out there on the floor. Having a little fun on a Friday night. Adi between the circles. Jumper from the near corner from Carter Jones. No. Rebound pulled down by Riggs Toby. Long outlet pass up ahead to Alex Dews. He'll rise and fire off the front iron. Unger in the board. And the Flyers will dribble it out from there. Wasn't always pretty. Wasn't always easy. But Marion Local. Grabs a 48-32 victory tonight over the Fort Recovery Indians. Moving to 10-2 on the season while Fort Recovery drops to 8-6. We'll step aside and come back and put a bow on this one. Flyers grab a Midwest Athletic Conference victory over Fort Recovery at the Fort Site Fieldhouse here on WOSN. We're back here at the Fort Site Fieldhouse wrapping up a victory for the Marion Local Flyers. They pull away at the end, but uh, join now with the Marion Local head coach, Kurt Guttemore, and it wasn't always pretty, but you, you grind out a victory tonight. I think you, that's an apt word. We did grind out a victory. Uh, you know, we really struggled on offense in the middle two quarters. Um, give Fort uh, Recovery a lot of credit. Uh, they defended us pretty well. Uh, you know, it really comes down to making some shots. Uh, we made four threes in the first half. But in the second half, I don't think we hit one. Uh, so we really had to do it with our defense. Uh, and I think we held them to 12 points in the second half. And, you know, what we've told our kids after the game, you know, there's nights your offense isn't going to be working, but your defense has got to be a constant. And our defense it, it did a good job tonight. You mentioned the, the three-pointers. You said, you know, we have to shoot better than one for 15 that you did last week. How important was it to get those off, off, the, off the top of, to, to even just give yourself a little bit of confidence? Well, it was nice to get a lead early in the game, especially on the road in this league. It's, you know, it's always tough to win. And we got out to a little bit of a lead, and that gave us a little bit of comfort. And, Again, I give Fort Recovery a lot of credit. I thought they, you know, did a great job getting back in the game, and then it was a fist fight for four quarters. You're without Jaden Mesher tonight. You got a, a really good contribution from Luke Pullman. What can you say about the, the game he played for you? Well, Luke, you know, he, he led us in scoring last Friday against New Bremen, uh, coming off the bench, and now he's a starter. And uh, I thought we got good contributions from Mitchell Ranley off the bench and Ryan Holman. You know, Ryan's a JV player. Uh, he played a lot of minutes tonight for us. He did a good job. And once we finally got Jack going late in the game, you know, Jack – Jack just needs to get a little bit mad. When he gets <laughs> mad, it's kind of look out, you know. And if he plays with that kind of fire and energy, you know, we're going to be a tough team. 
Well, Kurt, we appreciate your time. Congratulations on the victory. All right, thank you guys for yep. coming. Appreciate it. Yep. Great win, Coach. That's Marion local head coach Kurt Guttemore joining us. It's Dave Bowen. We talk now about the, the Stolly Hustle Award winner, and we, we mentioned Luke Pullman, and I, I think he's got to be the winner tonight, right? Yeah, Luke Pullman, he stirred the drink a little bit tonight. He was the proverbial straw, hit a couple big shots, did some penetrating, and then defensively, he was always in the mix, did a nice job. Yeah, he's our Stolly Award winner tonight. So a big night from Pullman. He average, or scores 12 points all average. Uh, just over under four so he had a big contribution tonight so Luke Pullman is our Stolly Hustle Award winner and for more Stolly Hustle Award winners check out the WOSN YouTube page that'll do it from us here at the Fort Sight Fieldhouse for our fantastic WOSN crew and Dave Bowen I'm Garrett Seawright the final score the final time Marion Local wins 48-32 over Fort Recovery and we'll catch you next time right here on WOSN <laughs>